Hello and welcome back. This is uh, MTGO Legacy Review number three, Rock vs. Elves, round two, game two. Uh, this hand is fine. I mean, we have a JIT, we have a Thought Seize to be able to interact. Uh, we're kind of just flying by wing. What we want to do here is, ideally, they don't play anything on one. <laughs> ideally. With the deck is all one and two drops that produce mana, or one drops that produce mana. Why on earth I was thinking that, I don't know. But we're hoping to not have to Thought Seize until turn two. That way we can hopefully thought seize, or play a guy, Thought Seize them, play Jit Equip. That's the hope. Uh, if we can get that accomplished, then we'll have removal up for their extra mana sources and be able to go. So, I'm going to go ahead and pause it. There was only one thing that I saw this game. I guess I could just kind of keep going. Um, I'll pause. Alright, here we are at the 45 second mark. Uh, it's, this actually is where we set up at. Uh, our opponent is playing Guy's Cradles. We know that. Combo Elves is notorious for randomly catching you off guard. Uh, what our opponent could have done and would have been entirely painful was to just lead off with Glimpse of Nature, Heritage Druid, play another thing, and start going off and win. Like, it sucks that that's a possibility. I mean, even it could have just been a basic land, but if it's a Cradle, it produces two. And that means that he's got an extra mana floating because he's got one for the Glimpse, one for the new Elf, play the cradle, go for two, suddenly it's, um, what's the, Nettle Sentinel, draw a card, oh look, there's another Nettle Sentinel or a one drop elf, suddenly we're looking pretty shabby, um, luckily for us our opponent doesn't, unfortunate for us, we still lose the game, uh, we end up finding a situation where we don't really have much of a choice, and I'll go over that in a moment. All right, here we are. This is the choice I was talking about. We uh, we ended up thought seizing our opponent, and seeing a crop rotation as being the most threatening thing. So we took that. I'm lying. We didn't. We took this card right here, which is no. I take it back. We thought seized and took a glimpse. What did we take? I didn't even really watch. Um, <laughs> what am I talking about? Wow, we're thought seizing right now. Let me not be an idiot. I see the thought seize, I see his graveyard, and it's like, oh, we took something. No, we're thought seizing right now, and this, these are our choices. Here's the problem with this. By the way, that scenario that I was talking about, all that this needed to be was another one-drop elf. If it was, we would have been in a much worse situation. Probably would have lost that turn. Um, here's the situation where we're at, and why we're, we're pretty much boned. Okay, so... We are counting on this JIT. The problem with that is that Symbiote, not only is it a mana engine for him, because he'll block, bring it back up, and then be able to draw an extra card with it, but it also stops JIT from getting counters, because he'll play this. This will block. He'll return this to his hand, and then the next turn, just replay it. We end up looking like pretty much idiots. So, he gets essentially a free glimpse every turn and if he gets the mana up he can do it twice per turn until he's ready to just overrun me like I literally need a deed if, with this board and this in play for the scenario I need some type of removal a deed would be preferable uh, if I can get this played equipped and kill this then we have a chance I mean we're aiming at mana dorks before we aim at the visionary but that's because one we don't need him actually using his mana. Like, if we can get him back down to just having forest like last game, we can probably win. Uh, that being said, the next card up is Natural Order. We boarded out the Lilianas. They're terrible against elves. He's probably got a Progenitus in his deck. We uh, we don't find out until later. It's actually Copperhood Behemoth, by the way. Uh, played him again later. I don't know if it was recorded. I don't think it was recorded. Um, he's got a Copperhood Behemoth, which... Yeah, that was an interesting thing to see. But you figure they stick out like 50 elves in a turn, and he just gave them all haste and played a Copperhood Behemoth off of the Natural Order. Actually, I think that one he green sunned for. Guy's Cradle does wonders when you have uh, crop rotation, by the way. That's another thing that could happen uh, 
that could have happened in that glimpse scenario. If he drew a crop rotation, he could have crop rotated, been able to produce three mana and do something else. So, yeah. But we can't beat a Progenitus, especially not one this early. Like, just hands down, it literally is a game ender. So we end up having to take this card just because the other two we can hope that our opponent makes a mistake with. They probably won't, though, seeing as this is more of a backup plan anyway. Uh, last card on the list. Green Sun Zenith. Why is this on the list of cards that we can't beat? I mean, uh, during the video I referred to these three as all being the of death cards. Because it doesn't matter which one I take, the other two will kill me. Any, any one of them will be the end of me. Uh, provided that I don't draw the perfect out against it. Uh, the perfect out against this was another discard spell. This one is this discard spell. And this is any removal spell. Which, luckily, there are a lot more of these. So we want to keep that in hand. But the reason this is an of death card, he's already set up. We need to kill his board. One moment. Alright. Caught that cough well beforehand. Um, unfortunately... He's probably got Artifact and Enchantment Removal in his deck. Probably Artifact Removal in the form of Viridian Zealot. Um, that being said, our JIT, which is our only real answer right now, is an Artifact. He's got access. Even if we swing and connect, he's still got 2 mana, 3 mana, with the return of an Elf, which means that this is off. Is, is no longer a selectionable choice. Like... And we can't just afford to let it sit there, like, in his hand. Like, we have to play this out, because if we don't, the next turn he just goes and Green Sun Zenith blows up our mock, sets us back to two lands, and still has this out there. Then he's got reusable artifact enchantment removal, or artifact removal, for the JIT later on. And we're fighting with two lands and an arbor, and a uh, ooze next turn. Which will hold off his team, I mean, we'll still be able to attack with for two, but... I mean, he's still going to be drawing a ton of cards every turn. And the hat still has the ability to just keep this JIT nullified. So, that's the reason why this choice is pretty much death no matter what. Like, I would have, I could have conceded at this point and it would have been justified for the fact that this combination will beat me, this will beat me on its own. Just, there's no other way around it. Even if he went and got the Copperhood Behemoth, like, if we take this... He goes and gets another Visionary next turn instead, and we kind of freak out. Or he goes and gets the Viridian Shaman, and then the turn after that, he's got four guys. He just natural orders one of them. They all get basically overrun, and he smashes our face into the ground. Yay! And if we do, if we do keep it, or if we do take like this one, or yeah, whatever. If he does draw another Elf. He just plays that, and then suddenly, instead of Overrun, they're getting plus four, plus four. Or even worse, he draws one of these or one of these, and then gets two guys in play. And it's like, oh, gee, thanks. We're all taking plus five, plus five. Your side is ridiculously large as well. Thank you. Everybody likes to be hit for a billion. So, I'm going to go ahead and pause it, end it here. Uh, those are the two things that I saw that kind of sat there for me. Uh, I will see you again for the next round.